Hello and welcome to episode 39 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, where we always split and double down our eights. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Is that a correct blackjack move? Uh, split and double down? Yeah. You pretty much always split eights, but you know, you probably wouldn't want to double down with just an eight. <laughs> It's not a good, good, good idea. Unless you're up against a six, maybe. Hmm. That's about it. What if they're showing a king? No, you definitely don't want to do that. Unless you don't like money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, money's... Not, what was he saying? Money's... It's just money, right, guys? <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, we've got some treasure hunting to go over. How many items do you have? Four. I've got three. Ooh, nice. Yep, I went to um, the Goodwill. Yeah. And found a fighter's dream cachet of three games. Sick. I'll go first. Okay. Oof. <laughs> Dude, what's up with this hecka gay case? <laughs> it's Fallout 3, which is hecka tight for it, PlayStation. It's the, you, you get it for pre ordering the game. You have the music soundtrack and a poster. Oh, okay. It looks. I just. The case looks all weird. It says, reserve your copy today like it's a generic store display case. Yeah, you get it for reserving it, I think, when it first came out. Oh, okay. That's why they don't have a, a machine on it like a PlayStation or Xbox. It's just generic for all machines. How dare you, gay box. <laughs> it's not a gay Xbox version. I know, but you said Xbox instead of gay box. Oh, okay. <laughs> my next item, or my first item, uh, Gen... Three console? Ooh. The Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Championship Edition. King of Fighters 99. The case is a little broken, but I have to change it out. Complete. Yep. That's tight. Heck yeah. Is Mai on here? Heck yeah, she is. I already looked up the character roster online and everything. Here's my next item. We're playing PC games now? Yeah, if there were, if there were <laughs> something. What is this, Half-Life? It's um, Team Fortress Classics. Oh, I just saw that. Isn't that the Half-Life yeah. symbol? Yeah. Yeah. It says on uh, price charting, the complete is rare. They don't even have a price for it. And is this complete? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Is this a book? Yeah. <laughs> That's the sleeve that I guess they don't have a book unless it's <laughs> this Soul Calibur. Oh. Brad got so excited he knocked everyone's mics off. Oh, Soul Calibur. Yeah. Two yep. for GameCube. That's heck of time. Complete. Here's my next one. Oh my. Brian Gurr get a boner off this game. <laughs> EverQuest for PC. Complete. That's tight. Wow. Oh, Derek Waddell. Derek W. is hecka lame. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to share that. <laughs> that. That's Dwayne Espinosa's brother. What do you say about uh, the Royal Rumble? He thinks Bautista's going to win. Well, that's not a bad pick. No. But Vince would probably let him win. I just Bautista. He's like the ultimate douchebag you see how he was dressed when he came back on monday night <laughs> yeah. and he was so unsynced with his uh gatling gun uh thing <laughs> he started hecka early and was all off <laughs> he's got to take some tips from kofi that falls on everything he's got it going. come on batista i was gonna i was gonna keep this game yeah. but then um i found you could download it on the ps3 you might want to think about downloading this one too mm. Capcom vs. SNK2, that's Yeah, tight. that has my favorite character in there. Favorite fighting character. Terry, Terry Bogard. Terry Bogard. <laughs> he's not in King of Fighters? Uh, I don't think he's... I don't, I don't know. He might be, but I think there's like... In 99... Boom, here's my last one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, StarCraft. I, that's cool. It's not part two, but it's part one. Also for the PC engine. <laughs> cool. So, uh, I guess I lose in treasure hunting? Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, well. Let's roll some dice here. I'm going to text a picture of this to Brian Gerwer. StarCraft and EverQuest. You should do them all three. Okay, so we have a new prize will list, some new additions. We have a Death Punch times three. 
What is, is that like a three hundred percent power death punch? No, that's just three punch, three oh, okay. full power punches on the arm or the thigh. Mm -hmm. Your choice. Okay. Death punch times five. That's not cool. <laughs> we have a critical attack. Avoid two items next week. Ooh. I have some doozies for next week. And a buttercup. <laughs> Can you explain a buttercup again? <laughs> it's when you cup your hand. And you force it up onto the player's balls to hit him. Oh. Like a palm. Huh. Okay, that's a little gay, but... <laughs> I'll roll first. Eleven. Dinner bought for. Ten dollar limit. Five. Avoid most expensive item next week. Four. Ten dollars added to the bank. I will choose void most expensive item next week. Oh, man. I'm glad I say that item I got... Uh, for la for next week. All right. Uh, eight. Corn dog. Yes. <laughs> Fourteen. Death punch times five. Sixteen. Buttercup. <laughs> oh man. Which one would you like? How fast in rapid succession are the death punches? Just like boom, boom, boom. I'll take the buttercup. Oh man, you love testicular abuse, don't you? <laughs> if wait, if I do the death punch, will you use your left hand? No. <laughs> For clarification, I am left-handed, but I do ninety-eight percent of things with my right hand. Pseudo left-hander. <laughs> okay, what do you have on? Sweatpants. Yeah. All right. Rotate this way a little bit. <laughs> I felt both of his balls in my hand. <laughs> it sucks because it doesn't. In the mic. In the mic. It doesn't start hurting until like ten seconds after. <laughs> That's called the phantom, phantom buttercup. <laughs> oh, man. Top five? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and roll to see who goes first. I roll 19. You could roll mine. Brandon rolls seven, Nick rolls seven again. So I guess I'll go first. Okay. So the top five we got for you guys this week is top five Final Fantasy characters. We didn't limit it to Squaresoft. We didn't say, you know, top five Squaresoft characters. This is straight Final Fantasy. The best uh, franchise they have out there, in my opinion, and probably most other people's as well. Number five on my list is going to have to be Lulu from Final Fantasy X. Um, I'm just going to get this out there right now because I'm sure no one has these characters on their top five. But I have my honorable mentions are Lulu, ah. Quistus, and Tifa, all because of their great assets. <laughs> to, cl I to clarify, Lulu's from ten, Quistus is from eight. And Tifa is from seven. I was gonna pick Tifa, but I feel like I could break her. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I just Lulu's more full, more voluptuous than Tifa. Tifa's like a stick with big boobs. And plus, uh, I do like Lulu the best, but she also has the little Moogle she carries around that she attacks with, and that's hecka tight. <laughs> so my number five is gonna be Lulu from Final Fantasy X. Uh, for two big obvious reasons, of course. <laughs> Plus, she is the black mage of the game. I like how she is self-possessed, like Piccolo, kind of. It can make her come off as an insensitive at times. She is dressed in a low-cut, dark gray, and black dress that prominently displays her cleavage, hmm. from which she pulls out items with. <laughs> she wears a corset with lace stockings. The only downfall to, to her is to get her ultimate weapon... You must dodge lightning 200 times. Yeah, it freaking sucks. Have you ever done it? Like, completed it? 
Hell no. I, I think the most I've got was like 15, and then I was like, this is so stupid. I remember I did it, but I would save it like every, after every 20. You can't do that. You have to do it consecutively. With, without, without leaving or anything. Without running into any enemies. It's dumb. Do you have any more on Lulu? That's all I have. I, uh, number five on my list. Palum and Porum. Nice. The twins from Final Fantasy IV. I tried to keep my list with uh, only one character from each Final Fantasy game. That That's near impossible. It, it's near impossible, I'm telling you right now. I will tell you that I've got three different Final Fantasy games on my list. But uh, trying to pick five was... Or like one from each franchise, you can't do that. For, I couldn't, anyways. That's just cray cray. <laughs> Alexis says that. <laughs> that's heck of funny. I, I know that's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all get hit in the head recently? You've been acting pretty dumb, like posting <laughs> pictures of boxes of Fresca on Facebook. <sighs> I just post what I like. I never seen you post a picture of Pepsi. That's not true. I post pictures of Diet Pepsi all the time. This was before you got Facebook. I don't do it anymore because I don't want to start a cola war. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not relive episode 32. <laughs> so, uh, Palm and Porum, uh, we've talked about these two characters a lot. Uh, Cecil gets them in their party when he comes across Mesidia. Did I say that city name right? It sounds right. Yeah, Mesidia. Where uh, it's after the Leviathan attack right yeah yeah everyone gets separated and so uh the elder assigns palam and Porum to help cecil get to the um mount, mount ordeal and also to keep an eye on him because i think they think he's shady because he's a dark knight so uh, they have some awesome web uh, power attacks like comet and um what else did they have flare, flare. flare. yeah so that was my number five my number five is from Final Fantasy IX. It's Vivi, the Black Mage. I like Vivi a lot, uh, a lot based on his appearance. I just I love his look. He is kind of a homage to the uh, the original Black Mage in the uh, original Final Fantasy game. The token Black Mage. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he, he, Vivi's not a human. He's just a black. He's a Black Mage. He's a creation. Uh, he looks, he has like a black aura around his face. Um, he has these glowing yellow eyes. Um, he wears a hat that has like a, it's a pointy hat, wizard's hat, but the, the end of it hangs down like the hat's too big for him. He also wears like a bluish type robe and he doesn't really have a face. Like I said, it's just, it's just a black aura. Um, uh, so basically he's created, um, by Queen Braun, I believe. And um, there, there's this whole village of black mages that he runs into later in the game. Uh, d during the course of the game, he, he's often questioning why he exists, or even if he does exist, he, he's very philosophical in that sense. While he's at that village, he, he learns a little bit about his past, how he was created, um, and he also learns that his, uh, his lifeline is, fi is finite. He, they're only uh, bred to live a certain amount of time. Uh, but by the end of the game, he he's, he dies. But um, it's just a cool character because he's he, you see him develop as well. In the beginning, he's very he, he lacks confidence. He doesn't really like to use his magic very much because he's embarrassed by it. By the end, he's one of the he is the very best black wizard. He he has the best magic, and um, he with his help, they uh, are able to take down uh, Kuja. So that's my number five is Vivi from Final Fantasy IX. <clears throat> did you actually beat that game? I did, yeah. It's nice. I love that ending. Mm -hmm. uh, number four on my list is going to be Zidane Tribal from Final Fantasy IX. Oh, I have to speak up here. Vivi's my number two, but I feel like he should have been the main character in Part Nine. I didn't like Zidane at all. I agree. Yeah. I like Zidane as, because he was a thief, and he's the only main character who is a thief. Uh, he's got a monkey-like tail, kind of like Saiyans. Yeah, that's why that that's his only saving grace for me. Is he reminds me of a Saiyan. Uh, he <laughs> he dual wields knives and short swords, and uh, he's a bit of a skirt chaser, always trying to get into Garnet's pants. <laughs> uh, 
Zidane can be serious when the situation calls for it. Uh, and again, this game has the best ending, in my opinion, of Final Fantasy games. I feel like Final Fantasy VI could have been a little bit better. And four, it just kind of left it hanging there with Cecil and Rosa getting married. So uh, that's my number four. Uh, my number four. And that has the um, my favorite mini quest or side quest in any... The Kokobo digging? Oh, man. That Kokobo digging, I was so obsessed with that. Mm. It's not even funny. Also has uh, Ozma. Oh, did you ever beat him? Hell no. Uh, uh, Kevin Bach said he posted he beat it and finally. And I guess you're supposed to get a, a book telling you on how to play the card game if you beat Ozma. But it, again, it's like it doesn't make sense because I looked at it online and I was like, what the hell? That card game sucks. If they put Final Fantasy IX story and mini games and added triple triad into it, it would be like the ultimate Final Fantasy game for next gen consoles. That'd be cool. Number four on my list is the only villain on my list, and that's Kefka. Uh, in my opinion, the greatest villain of all time. Uh, he started out as just basically the um, the uh, the lackey of Gen uh, General Gestal, and he just fucks up the world. Basically, uh, he undoes the balance of the three statues, creates a world of ruin, and becomes this huge deity that you have to fight at the end. Uh, he's uh, a clown in appearance in the beginning, so he's kind of like a court jester, always laughing and uh, wanting to kill and poison, but then he just turns into this huge monster uh, near the end of the game, and it's a great boss battle. The only thing I don't like about it is you could ultima your way up to the top of him, because he's in sections. So every time you beat a section, you just keep climbing, but if you keep using ultima, it's a pushover. I train my people to have like 99 magic, so like Bolt 3 would take away 9999. Yeah. Just because Bolt 3 is faster. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Ultima takes like 5 to 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got time for that? <laughs> or like Knights of the Round in Final Fantasy 7. Oh man, that took heck of days. <laughs> and you couldn't skip it. <laughs> Kefka was my number three. Um, I just wanted to add on top of that that I, I think he has a really cool appearance. Uh, he looks like a jester. He wears all these flamboyant robes, and they're, they're just crazy colors. A lot of reds, lots of blues. Um, he also wears face paint. It's just He's a really cool character. He's fucking evil as hell. It seems like the only thing that makes him happy is doing harm to other people. Um he does like a lot of shady stuff, like um, when he poisons the water, like you had mentioned, yeah. at uh, Dolma Castle. <laughs> After he does that, he laughs and says, uh, nothing can beat the sweet music of hundreds of voices screaming in unison. It's just so awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so dark. <laughs> it is. The way, he, the way his laugh is uh, portrayed on the game, it, it's perfect. I mean, it's a 16-bit system. There's not a whole lot of great sound. I mean, to me, it's great just because it's nostalgic, but it doesn't sound like a real laugh. It just... It sounds perfect for what they're trying to portray for him. So I, I, li I like Kefka as well. He's my number three. But uh, since we're on number four, I'll, did you have something to add? No, go ahead. You were leaning in like you had something to say. Uh, my number four is uh, my only female character on my list. It's uh, the character for whom my daughter is <laughs> named after, Rosa Farrell from Final Fantasy IV. Uh, Rosa's a skilled archer. She's also a magnificent white mage. Uh, She's the love interest of Final Fantasy IV's main character, Cecil. She wears a long white robe and a belt that holsters a dagger. She has long blonde hair, and um, contrary to her Hispanic-sounding name, she is a white woman. <laughs> so that that was one of the reasons why I loved the name Rosa, just because I thought, thought it was cool that it, it kind of went against the grain. And uh, I really like that name for my daughter as well. Uh, so she's a very uh, altruistic character. She doesn't really have any flaws, which I guess kind of makes her uninteresting. But the fact that she is uninteresting and, and like I said, altruistic, just I, I think it's a, a really cool thing to, to do for a character. Because a lot of times there is there are flaws. And the fact that she does not have any flaws makes her interesting. Kind of a interesting way of uh, looking at it, I guess. But uh, she, she truly loves Cecil. I mean, she'll go through anything for him. She always backs him, even when he's going through the phase where he's a dark knight. She, she, she's always backing him. Uh, but, but she knows that he can be so much more, and he, he, she kind of pushes him into the stage where he uh, becomes a paladin. Um, 
She also provides encouragement to Rydia uh, after she lost her mother. She uh, she kind she 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 was scared of using the uh, the fire spell because her her village was burned to the ground, and uh, Rosa gave her the encouragement necessary to to use the fire spell, which was something that they needed to do to get through um, Mount Mount Hobbs because it was uh, blocked with ice, which is a, a thing that they they uh, encountered during their journey. So that was my number four is uh, Rosa. My number three is Kefka as well. Um, I put down here that he's the first villain in a Final Fantasy game that was consistent throughout. Zero Miss is like sleeping through the whole game of Final Fantasy IV. And you don't even know he exists until like you get to the moon, yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. And you like fight Golbez and you beat him and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm Cecil's brother. Let's go fight the real villain. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought Golbez was going to be... And then when Golbez and Fuso yeah, fight Zero Miss... Or Zemus, his first gay form. <laughs> They're like hella little. Like Golbiz took up the whole screen yeah. before. He was just as big as Rubik Kant. <laughs> <laughs> Rubik Conte? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see if I have any other notes on here. Oh yeah, I put Zero Miss is sleeping. Sephiroth is acting all emo and he's all does you know, he shows the face a few times. Uh, let's not even talk about the last boss of Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> but I don't even know who it is. <laughs> I never beat that game. Um, let's just not go there. Uh, Kefka succeeds in destroying the world and poisoning the Doma Castle people, and he's just maniacal. That's my number three. My number three is Cecil from Final Fantasy IV. Uh, Nick pr- pretty much hit it on the head when he was talking about Rosa. He he starts out as a dark knight. Uh, very conflicted with his actions like when in the beginning he steals the crystal crystal does he steal the crystal crystal from Mysidia? yeah and so that's why they don't like him yeah oh, okay yeah so he does steal the crystal and then he um, goes back uh, later on but even then he's just not liking it uh, he gets attacked on his way back from bringing the crystal back to the castle and then the uh, the king of uh, Baron Castle sends him and Kane to deliver a letter to uh, the the village of the Mist where Rydia is. Uh, now I'm not for sure on this, but in the Japanese version, does he know it's a bomb or does he still think it's a letter? It's called a bomb in the Japanese version. Yeah. In the English version, it's called a package. Yeah. Hmm. So Cecil's delivering a package to Rydia. <laughs> and it, and it, <laughs> And in order to to deliver the package to Rydia, he has to kill her mom, the Mist Dragon. But uh, Cecil breaks free of his dark past on Mount Ordeal um, and becomes a paladin and rises up to save the world. That Scarmillion battle is awesome when you, to, before you become a paladin. Mm-hmm. I like how you fight his first form and then you leave and he's like, I'm back and you have to fight him again. <laughs> yeah, and he's changed. Yeah. What well, was he called in the original Minion? I think so. Or Millen. Millen. Yeah. yeah. And then Millen Z or whatever. Yeah. Z Millen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> uh, around three, right? Kefka. Okay, I, I had Kefka. I already said all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Number two for me is going to be Radia of Mist. Nice. She's a green-haired summoner from Final Fantasy IV. Uh, English version, Call. She uses Call instead of Summon. Uh, since green is my favorite color, I always wanted to make sure that the carpets match the drapes. She held from the village of the <laughs> Did you do some research on that? No, like, I didn't. Like, did you go online and look at, like, all the naked pictures of her that people draw? <laughs> no. And, and, like, yep, I guess it is green down I there. I just assumed it was. Oh. Because if you have green hair, she had green... It's not like she dyed her hair, so... Obviously, she's got green pubes. <laughs> Unless she goes Shave. Brazilian. She like shaves. <laughs> Waxes. Uh, That's a cool magic spell. Wax! And yeah. <laughs> it makes all the pubes fall off. <laughs> That's uh, fire one. Like, <laughs> like Edge is walking by and she's all wax. Or, or Yang needs a touch up on his bald head. <laughs> no, um, Edge will know what's on. When he comes in, it smells like burnt hair. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Freshly shaven. <laughs> Uh, she hails from the village of Mist, which uh, Cecil and Kane destroy unintentionally or unintentionally, depending on the version you're playing. Um, 
She's well versed in summoning and black magic. By the end of the game, she's your most strongest black mage. Uh, in my opinion, stronger than Fusoya because Fusoya, he's only got like a hundred lives under yeah. hit points or something. And like he that. was like a red mage, huh? He had black and white. And then Radia was white magic too, but she lost that when she became more tainted. Yeah. From the village of monsters. What do you think they did to her there? Tentacle rape. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who do you think did it? Leviathan with his tail or... Ashura with her swords, maybe. Oh, that's kind of dangerous. <laughs> or maybe there's like a, a special secret sewing monster that just has crawling with tentacles. The, the Kraken. Like, <laughs> like Shuma Garath. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> the Village of Mist, it's time worked differently because it aged her, huh? No, the, the Land of Summon Monsters. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. So she was, like, suffering for heck along. With tentacles. Yeah. Uh, number two was Vivi on my list. Uh, it's just such a great character. Uh, like I said, he should have been the main character, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, not anything else to add for Vivi. I just liked how he was all alone, and then he found his people and found purpose in his life. My number two is another uh, antagonist. It's Sephiroth. I don't give a fuck what Brad says about him. <laughs> uh, he's he, in the beginning. He's treated by the uh, the public as a war hero for the Shinra military and the soldier program. Uh, you learn later that he has higher aspirations than just to be a war hero. Uh, he himself believes that he's the only remaining survivor of the ancients, and his goal is to take control of the live stream and become a god. Um, his his appearance is is really cool. He has this long white hair that's kind of his signature. He also uh, wields a massive moon sword, which is fucking awesome. Uh, he also wears a long black coat, and he, he he has a he has a shirt under it, but you can see his chest, which is kind of sexy. <laughs> uh, he also wears these black boots and black pants. So basically, everything he wears is black, but that that just makes his white hair just pop out that much more. And he doesn't have any chest hair. I don't think so, no. Oh, man. He was fire one. Uh. <laughs> he does have a, a wing, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's you, you can't remove him from the list just because that song is so awesome. The one wing, winged angel. Um, so a little bit about his past. Uh, he was born to Professor Hojo, who S Sephiroth treated like he was a piece of shit because he didn't know that P Professor Hojo was his father. Um. His mother was someone he never met. It was some character named Lucretia who never really shows up in the game. Uh, but uh, during the... Uh, while he was growing in the womb, she was injected with cells from Genova, and that's how uh, Sephiroth got his powers. He, he's, he's not exactly what he thinks that he is, but he is definitely something more than human. He, he does have a lot, a, a lot of uh, significant powers. But I also like that he fucks with uh, Cloud throughout the entire game. I think that's funny. <laughs> So that's my number two, Sephiroth. You remember that scene when uh, Cloud is all paralyzed and he's going down into the live stream? He looks all helpless and he's in, isn't he in a wheelchair or yeah, something? Yeah, Tiff is pushing him in a wheelchair. And he's got like spirally eyes. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> and um, another cool thing I like about Sephiroth is he killed the Midgar Zolum at the in the beginning of the game because it was like spiked on a tree. So did we, though. Yeah, that's why I wanted to kill it, because Sephiroth killed it. <laughs> so we didn't leave Midgar until we were able to kill it. We gained levels for, I think, like three days straight Jesus. in order to kill it. Wow. And learn beta, because it was a yellow a yellow spell you could get. Huh. Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so number one on my list is going to have to be Saban and Edgar Figaro from Final Fantasy VI. That's my number one as well. I put the most awesome twins in video game history. They each should uh, be used in all parties in the game from Final Fantasy VI. Uh, Sabin for his monk te techniques and Edgar for his tool abilities. The chainsaw is the most awesome tool ever. Uh, it's very tricky to get. You get it in uh, Zozo. Uh, Sabin's ultimate blitz move is a bum rush or phantom rush, depending on what version you're playing. Uh, he also uses Aura Bolt or Aura Cannon, which looks like a Kamehameha technique. <laughs> <laughs> And there's, I like how there's a deep story in between them that unveils itself throughout the game as it progresses. If you do certain actions, you're able to learn who the rightful king of Figaro is and who, you know, Edgar let his brother leave so he'd take on the crown. 
Yeah, Saban didn't want that shit. Hell no. He was like, I'm out of here. So um, Edgar, he's like, I'll flip you for it. If it's heads, you could go. If it's, um, and so if, if it's uh, tells. tells, you stay. So, of course, he had the double-sided coin, and he let um, Saban leave, and he took the uh, burden of the crown. And that's probably uh, my my fit, most favorite part in that game is when you have to get Odin, when you have to go uh, use the um, castle to move, and then it stops, and you fight Tonberries under the, in the World of Ruin. Those Tonberries are hecka hard. What, what's the move they use? Um, it's not Vengeance or Revenge. It's... I don't remember. Karma or something. It's basically you don't want to attack them or they'll fuck you up with their knife. You're both wrong. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Number one is Kane. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, so Kane is a dragoon. He's, he's from, obviously from Final Fantasy IV. He's a dragoon from the Kingdom of Baron. He's the childhood friend of Cecil Harvey. He also has feelings for Rosa. Uh, it doesn't really show a whole lot through the game. They kind of hint at it every now and then. Uh, you kind of get the feeling that he keeps it under wraps because, you know, he values his friendship with Cecil and he doesn't want to, you know, ruffle any f- feathers. Um, another character who just has a, a brilliant appearance, um, the helmet that he wears is in the shape of a dragon's head. It looks so fucking awesome. Uh, he wears this body armor that's it's kind of like a purplish dark blue. It's, it covers his whole body. It has, like, spikes strewn about throughout throughout the, uh, the entire outfit. And his weapon is this spear, and with with this spear, he uses this attack called jump. Uh, the beautiful part about the jump attack is that once you tell him to jump, he'll leave the screen completely, and he'll be gone for a few turns. So if if the if your opponent uses some sort of like violent, vicious, brutal uh, group attack, he avoids that attack altogether. He takes no damage. Mega nuke. Yeah, that, that would be an yeah. example of it. <laughs> he would just completely avoid that, so he takes no damage. Meanwhile, he's planning his, his descent, and he just delivers this awesome attack. It, t- it takes up so much power, especially if you if you got the correct um, spear or lance attached to him. Um, so uh, during the course of the game, uh, Kane gets possessed by who you think is the antagonist in the game, Golbez. And... Um, Golbez uses Kane against Cecil and his party in the in, in, uh, in the game. Kane finally escapes the trance and he vows to atone for his actions and he does. Uh, at, at the end, of course, they destroy Zemus and Zeromus. And um, that, as Brad said, at the very end of the game, Rosa and Cecil get married. The only member of the party who's not there is Kane. And it's be- you kind of get the feeling that it's because he's just so ashamed for the actions that he took while he was under the trance from Golbez. So I, I think it's a really cool twist on the game and... Uh, He's my favorite character from the Final Fantasy series. You know, I always thought that that was changed as well in the from Japanese to America. That he knew that he was deceiving and uh, wasn't under any spell. But I guess it is true that yeah, kind of like Majin Vegeta, how he just steals Bobby's power, allows himself to become evil. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I don't think. He, you could compare Kane with Maja and Vegeta. <laughs> but I did have a question. When he jumps, where do you think he goes? Like on a perch or something? In the sky. He's just fucking jumped hella high. <laughs> <laughs> That's heck of crazy. Fuck yeah, it is. There's the, no, there's fucking a, dragoon. There's no tree in, trees in the grassland where you fight imps. <laughs> he just stays in the sky. <laughs> Braggai texted me back for that picture. <laughs> he said... I believe Sony is doing an all access for their members so you can play any game coming soon. What? Dude, that's hecka old news. Basically, Sony's doing like a Netflix for their all their library so you won't have to like buy old PS1, 2 and 3 games. But that's hecka old news, Brian. Come on now. <laughs> Let's go, Brian guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Do you guys have any honorable mentions? Uh, besides the three females I listed, I did have Golbez. Yeah. Uh, and I also had Ramza from Final Fantasy Tactics. I didn't play that, so I have no familiarity with it. I heard Kefka was pretty badass on there, though. Was Kefka on Tactics? Cloud. Cloud? Oh, well, yeah. Wasn't there another game that Kefka was on? Uh, Dissidia? Dissidia. Okay. The fighting game, yeah. I never played that because it was for the PlayStation P, and I never played that. I, I had one... Um, I bought it off a friend at work for like 25 bucks and I didn't like it. It's no, it's no DS. So I sold it to 
on Quran so we could give to Alexis for um for something Christmas or something. Some of the uh the screenshots looked cool, like the the gameplay looked really yeah. cool. Like when we went to go see Distant Worlds, they they mm-hmm. showed some of that during uh, Dancing Mad, which is Kafka's theme, and it looked really cool. Yeah. I guess it didn't play very well though, huh? I yeah. almost bought a PSP for that game, but I didn't. Yeah. Almost did though. They almost had. I wonder me. if we could get it on the PlayStation Three now. Maybe we might be able to play that. That'd be cool. I I also uh, like Tara's character a lot. Yeah, on Final Tara's Fantasy cool. Six. Um, half you, men- you mentioned yeah, half <laughs> Esper, half uh, human. Esper Six. <laughs> <laughs> also from Final Fantasy Six, another female character, Celeste, who I wanted to also name my daughter after Celeste. Uh, Tella, he's kind of a bitch, but he, he was a cool character. 98 magic points. <laughs> Just not quite enough for me to you. <laughs> and uh, Balthier from 12. I oh, like, yeah, I he was cool. Too. I did like him with the guns. Mm. Much better than, what was the antagonist? Not Titus, he was 10. Who was 12? I think he, uh, Balthier was 12. I, I don't remember who. The main character was. Oh, I don't, I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't remember. I just remember Balthier. Are you sure Balthier wasn't the main character? With the guns? No, he was like the second secondary character. I thought Vaughn? So too. Vaughn. Yeah, it was Vaughn, you're right. Yeah. I never played that game. I played it for a while, but I, I do like the char- character Baltier. Just because he kind of... He was different from a lot of the other characters. He was kind of flashy. He, he he knew his way around women. Yeah, he did. <laughs> like Johnny? <laughs> Fuck yeah, like Johnny. <laughs> the, you know what put me off that? That game was pretty cool. It was different because it was uh not turn-based it was basically you roam around and just fight monsters mm-hmm. but like three quarters throughout the game you get to this um this special cave i can't remember what it what you what you have to do or what it's called but you, in order but you have to get items throughout the whole game in order to complete this cave but some items you miss so you can't go back and get them oh, that's, uh, i hate when that happens yeah. when you can't get the items again so I turned it off. I didn't. I never beat that game. Uh, it, it was where you get like the ultimate weapons, but it was it was bull. I I couldn't stand it. Sorry. No, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked it because you could see like the heck of strong monsters in the beginning, and if you try to fight them like the fire elementals, yeah, they kill you. Uh huh. But um, I liked seeing the scale of monsters too. That was pretty cool. I had Christus on my honorable mention list, but you guys already said it. So. Yeah, we did. <laughs> what about Barrett? Ha! Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what a fair. <laughs> he was like just such the machismo guy. <laughs> like, Yo, I could say shit in this game. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did, huh? <laughs> I didn't like how he had a... Um, a gun for a hand, a machine gun. That was kind of ridiculous. That was very far fetched. <laughs> that he could control a gun with a without a hand. A lot of people liked Vincent. I I never really cared for him that much. Did you guys have any thoughts on? I Vincent? actually did like Vincent because he could turn into different monsters. Mm. Uh, but a lot of people love him because he's so emo. Like Pasam, that one dude who posted on uh, who posted about hitting Final Fantasy on the uh post i made about final fantasy 6 uh-huh. uh he was like it's such a stupid game but he loves him some vincent he wow. would he would suck his dick if he was real <laughs> wow gal anyone uh, <laughs> i like gal i like collecting his uh i lip. don't i do i thought it was fun we used to do that and get all of his moves but i, I, I couldn't do that, that now <laughs> no nah. i actually played that game probably like Seven or eight months ago, I guess. Final yeah, Fantasy I think VI. when we started, almost where we started the podcast, you were playing it. Yeah, uh, and that was one of the things that I just did not do. I just, I if I didn't have to use Gao, I never used him. I, I think I used him for like maybe one of his quests or something like that, but that was about it. He must have been heck a week. He, he was hella. He week. only had like imp <laughs> <laughs> level sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> I think Shadow deserves an HM, though. Yeah, Shadow was cool. I love Shadow. If you didn't wait for a Shadow, you were a retard. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. The cool picks. <laughs> Seahawks against the Patriots. Or Broncos. Who is it? 
I remember I was 50-50 last week. <laughs> oh, I have to make a correction real quick. Mark McGuire is not on the Dodgers. He's the hitting coach. He doesn't play. Oh, <laughs> oh you, you sent it. Well, Brad sent an email saying Mark McGuire is on the Dodgers. And when I was did like, this happen? And I was like, that's heck of retarded. He's on the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently he's not on either. He's on the Dodgers, but he doesn't play anymore. He's a hitting coach or something. <laughs> oh, that's kind of a betrayal to Oakland. Like, go to the scummiest, one of the scummiest teams. I don't know why he went into early retirement. It was like, I don't know where to. <laughs> yeah. It's like one one minute he was playing on the Cardinals. And, the and he had, like, it... the most home runs, like, ever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this what happened, why there was a sudden change to him just becoming a hitting coach. But I think he got divorced. Maybe that was it. Yeah. He, he he moved to the Cardinals. He was on the Simpsons. He, <laughs> he was he was up there with Daryl Strawberry. He was hitting he was hitting home runs, hitting dingers. Then all of a sudden he got divorced and then went on the <laughs> as a hitting coach. So depression probably caused it. He probably wouldn't get away from his wife in Oakland. He's like, I'm just gonna go to LA. <laughs> Maybe. Plus the Disneyland's there and Tournament of Kings. So who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? <sighs> Peyton, no, Broncos, right? Yep. Broncos, uh, that's Dean Bardo against the Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jason Johnson likes the Seahawks. Does he? <laughs> Didn't he have a big old like, Seahawk jacket that made him look more like a marshmallow? <laughs> Didn't he? Because remember... <laughs> <laughs> there are those like big puffy jackets that make you look like a marshmallow. I remember our mom got us one. I was like, Mom, I don't like puffy jackets. Uh, I know in his Facebook picture he's holding a giant fish so uh -huh. that he caught in Seattle. Oh, is that what happened? Yep. Oh, and uh, his little brother, he's holding two in, on his profile I haven't seen pic. that picture. It's pretty funny. His name's Brandon as well. You know, uh, I text Nick's dad for some reason. <laughs> Do you remember why I text him? <laughs> I can't remember, but I te text Nick's dad, and uh, he said, who is this? And I said, it's Brandon. He's like, oh, do you still live next door? Because he, he was his next door neighbor. I didn't know Brandon Bartholomew, so I sent him a picture of myself. He's like, oh, yeah, now I remember you. We went camping. I said, yeah. <laughs> So you still haven't made a pick. Oh, um, do you want to make an official pick next next time? No, I can I can make it right now after the game. Yeah, <laughs> when's the game? It's next Sunday. It's a week from right now. Oh man, it's coming up. They so they get like two weeks break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. They need to rest their muscles. They're gonna be refreshed. Are they playing in Louisiana? <laughs> New York. Oh, <laughs> ooh, that's tough. Um. Uh, I have to go with the Seahawks. Just, the, that weather is amazing. <laughs> don't care for the players. Don't care for the walrus coach. It's all about the um, the weather there. Plus, when I was little, that was the, the first team I or first team I ever liked because it's, it was like such a cool name, like Seahawk. And they were playing the Lions as the first football game I ever watched, and I'm going to Seahawks. Tight. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> Seahawks fucked my team out of the out of a win last week. So. Oh, I did pick the Niners last week though. They were close. It was a good game. Dude's leg got broken. Who's? Yeah. yeah. You didn't see that when his leg all went like. <sighs> I don't watch the game. That was a brutal play. It was. Not not only did he have his leg broken, but he recovered a fumble on the play, and the referee somehow didn't see that he had recovered the fumble, and then a, one of the. Seahawks players jumped on him and took the ball from him, oh. and they ruled that it was Seahawks ball. Like he, the guy was clearly obviously the guy. There was a guy laying on his leg. All three of his knees were down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he was clearly down because he was on the ground. He was being touched by another player, and then someone else from the other team just took the ball out of his hands and uh, they didn't challenge they, it. They couldn't because no one it. saw it. It's uh, not something you can challenge. Okay, that sucks. Are the old referees back that were making bad calls? <laughs> the uh, extreme, the extreme bikini referees, <laughs> bikini NFL, the XFL. 
who po- someone tweeted that on a few weeks ago on SmackDown or Raw, like talking about the XFL. Huh. I think it was Stone Cold. I thought it was pretty funny. We're a Rumble. Fuck yeah. We're Rumbles today. And also, we've got our game show coming out uh, on our next episode. So, uh, you guys got to look forward to that as well. Uh, Nick's hosting it. So, we're going to be putting that up as well. Picks for uh, Royal Rumble? I would love to see CM Punk to win, but I'm thinking they're going to give it to Batista. I hope you're wrong. Me too. Well, I know you're wrong. I, I, I already guaranteed 100% that CM Punk was going to win. Oh, shit. You got money on it? I don't have money with anyone on it. You got, like, some sort of prop bet, like, loser snorts some sriracha or something? I don't know. <laughs> Get me a ball of wasabi. I'll snort it if CM Punk doesn't win. <laughs> I have wasabi. The ball? What do you have? I have the, the tube wasabi. Oh, I'll snort that shit. <laughs> I think it's going to be – it's between three three guys. It's Batista, Roman Reigns, or CM Punk. I can't wait to see all the all, – I bet you all the members of the Shield is going to be in there with CM Punk and something dastardly is going to happen. Yeah. I think Ambrose or Seth might um, might turn, but just in like a heat of a moment type thing. I, I still think the Shield is going to go on past this, but – I just hope something happens scandalous. You know, I thought that Goldust and uh, Cody Rhodes were going to be competing in this thing, but they are in the pre-fight match. Oh, really? With the, the outlaw, the, the New Age outlaw. Oh, man. What? You know, it was cool when they came back for like a week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now it's I'm just sick of them. Yeah. I think this might be their last hurrah. I hope so. If they win the title, I'm going to be so mad. Yeah, <laughs> I hope one bad. of their arms gets broken. <laughs> I don't think they do a title exchange in the pre-show okay. match. But, I, I mean, yeah, I was kind of looking forward to Goldust and Cody Rhodes competing in it because I, I thought that what they're going to do is they're going to break them up for a WrestleMania match. They would go against each other, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. But, uh, yeah, the, the the Shield, there's been some tension there, so it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens in the Rumble when they're all in the ring together. Uh but yeah, I'm I'm pulling for Punk. He as uh, they call him. What do they call him? Corporate Kane announced <laughs> earlier this week that uh, CM Punk would be the first entrant into the Royal Rumble. So the odds are stacked against him, but he'll do it. I think he can do it. Him with his Pepsi power. <laughs> so there's also some other big matches though. Um, the Cena Orton rematch. Mm-hmm. I think that Cena will probably win. It's one that they, it could go either way, I think, because then they'll have a bit, a good match for Orton to lose it on WrestleMania. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If Cena wins, then there's no way he's losing at WrestleMania. That's Hell the no. So if Orton wins, then he's probably going to lose to whoever wins the Wrestle or the Royal Rumble today. That's yeah. true. Uh, the the Daniel Bryant Bray Wyatt match is also happening tonight. Is there a Divas match? I don't know. I don't, I don't think know. it was on the card. I've been trying to find information all week long about it, and they wouldn't list anything. Mm. Even on the so-called WWE.com. I even went, instead of going on the app, I went on the live computer and looked. They still didn't show me shit. Uh, oh, did anything happen at the end of SmackDown? I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. They kind of teased the, the Royal Rumble. like It was a six-man tag match. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was Goldust. <laughs> And Cody and I think maybe Biggie Langston. Mm-hmm. And I think they were just going up against the Shield. That fool needs to die. Biggie Langston? Yeah. <laughs> I think he's cool. I mean, he's I, not doing justice to the IC Championship. Neither did Curtis Axel, though. That's because it wasn't written right for him. Yeah, if he would have done the perfect plex correctly, then <laughs> it would have been cool. But I think Langston needs to do a new finishing move because his finishing move doesn't look like it hurts that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh,. Yeah, so basically what happened, I think um, either Cody or Goldust was about to pin one of the members of the Shield, and then the other members of the Shield jumped in there with him, and it just every, all the, the, the referee stopped the match. Oh, okay. but everyone was going at it, and then a couple of members came out of the back, and they started going at it, and a couple of other guys came out of the back, and the, the announcer was like, oh, well, this is just a preview of what's going to happen on Sunday at Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's how it ended. Uh, oh, C- CM Punk was the last guy to come out. And, uh, yeah. He the, threw the, him all over the top rope. <laughs> no, nah, not exactly. <laughs> yeah, th- so that's how the the broadcast ended. Everyone was just kind of going at each other. That's okay. all it was. So that'll do it for this week's edition of 
Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, where we always choose black mages over white. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.